at 6 p.m. on Monday here in Korea. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hong Ji-hye. Here are the headlines we're following at this hour. In a move expected to help boost the economy, Korea's presidential office considers designating the eve of National Liberation Day next week a temporary holiday. History made on the LPGA Tour as Korean golfer Park Bi becomes the first Asian to achieve a career Grand Slam. And despite falling exports, Korea posts record current account surplus for the first half of the year due to tumbling global oil prices. President Park Geun-hye has returned to work after a week-long summer break from designating a temporary public holiday to boost public morale to special amnesty. Our Choi Yoo-sun takes us through the issues that are topping the president's agenda. Upon returning from her week-long summer holiday, President Park Geun-hye will first discuss with her officials a proposal to declare August 14th this year as a temporary public holiday. Her spokesperson said the government had come up with the idea as part of its plan to boost public morale in time for the 70th anniversary of Korea's Liberation Day. The issue will be discussed at Tuesday's cabinet meeting. Liberation Day is marked on August 15th, the day in 1945 when Japan surrendered in World War II, also ending Japan's colonial rule over the Korean Peninsula. While the 15th falls on a Saturday this year, the government is considering to designate Friday the 14th a temporary holiday to reflect President Buck's hopes to instill national pride and boost public morale for Korea to start making an economic leap in the year of the 70th anniversary. The government is also seeking to boost domestic spending after the MERS outbreak by encouraging the Korean people to take an extra day off. Staying on the subject of economic revitalization, President Bak is expected to accelerate her reform drive, especially concerning the labor sector. Having emphasized that public support is essential to the success of a reform drive, the president will likely continue to stress that structural reforms are vital to job creation and sustainable growth. Also topping the president's agenda would be deciding whether to include the country's business leaders when announcing her planned special amnesty around the time of Liberation Day. As Korea is close to declaring an official end to the MERS outbreak, President Bak will need to think about holding those in charge of the country's lax response accountable and putting forth measures to enhance the nation's response to infectious diseases in the future. Choi Yoo-sun, Arirang News. Paginby's victory in Scotland has cemented her place in golf's history. Winning the British Open on Sunday, the world number one completed a career Grand Slam on the LPGA Tour. Pak becomes the seventh female player all-time to win four different majors. Our Son Jung-in has more. Top-ranked Pak in Bi began the final round of the Women's British Open on Sunday, three shots off the lead set by fellow Korean Ko Jin-young. However, the tide turned after the two Koreans were tied, with Park shooting an eagle on the 14th hole, while Go bogeyed the 13th. Then Park went up by one with a birdie on the 16th, and Go fell out of contention with a double bogey on the same hole. Park finished on 12 under 276 to win her seventh major overall title. And with that, she becomes the seventh female golfer in history to win at least four different majors over a career, with her earlier three victories at the Anna Inspiration, KPMG Women's PGA Championship, and the U.S. Women's Open. Park is the first woman to win the classic career Grand Slam since Sweden's Annika Sorestam in 2003. After showing nothing but poise in rallying to win the British Open, Park said completing the slam was a dream come true and the greatest feat she has accomplished as a pro. Looking further down the scorecard, and it had a distinctly Korean feel. Ko Jin-young was second, and Korea's Yoo so Yeon tied with Korean-born New Zealander Lydia Ko for third place. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. And President Park Geun-hye also congratulated the world number one on her victory at the Women's British Open, wishing Park continued success in her career. 
Shifting gears, Lotte Korea Chairman Shin Dongbin arrived in Seoul today and vowed to do his best to resolve the bitter family conflict for control of the retail empire. Speaking to reporters at the airport, Shin, the second son of Lotte founder Shin Kyok Ko, apologized for causing a hassle over the group's power struggle. The younger son also added that his father's orders to dismiss him from the board of Lotte Holdings was invalid in legal terms. Lotte Holdings is the de facto holding firm of Lotte co companies in Korea and Japan. The younger Shin met only briefly with his father at Seoul's Lotte Hotel today. Now, senior defense officials from South Korea and Japan will hold an annual meeting in Seoul on Wednesday to discuss a wide range of regional issues, including defense policies and ways to enhance bilateral cooperation. Officials say Korea will be represented by Yoon Sun Gu, Director General for International Policy at the Defense Ministry. Japan's delegate is Atsuo Suzuki, Deputy Director General of Tokyo's Defense Policy Bureau. The annual director level defense Defense talks between the two countries date back to 1994, but have not taken place since 2013. Footage has been released of a Korean force to work for the Japanese military during wartime and his eventual post-war trial. His testimonies describing the actions of the Japanese military during wartime is drawing attention to the sheer scale of Tokyo's sexual enslavement of Korean women. Our Connie Kim reports. The Seoul Base Association for the Pacific War Victims released a videotaped interview recorded in the early 1990s with a soldier named Song Bok Sub, who collaborated with the Japanese military during the Pacific War. The association says Song took on the role of a civilian worker in the Japanese military in the early 1940s to avoid a forced labor and worked as a prison guard in Indonesia. The release of the interview from the early 1990s comes days before the 22nd anniversary of the Kono Statement, in which Tokyo acknowledged Japan's sexual enslavement of women during World War II. In the interview, Song recalls how Singapore and the Indonesian island of Sumatra were heavily populated by Korean women that had been trafficked in and forced to service Japanese troops. He said the women were paid a pittance for their services. Song said he could not put an exact figure on the number of victims as countless Koreans had been drafted during wartime. In 1992, Song released a list of 61 women who served as Japanese military sex slaves. Historians estimate that more than 200,000 women, mostly Koreans, were forced to serve Japanese troops during Japan's colonial rule of Korea in the early 1900s. As for Song, he was put on trial as a Class B and C war criminal by the combined forces after World War II. However, he was found innocent with the help of an English prisoner he had met during wartime. Song testified that only two Koreans, including himself, were found not guilty in the trial in Singapore. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Korea's first vice minister, Cho Tae-yong, says Korea, China and Japan could enhance cooperation if they can agree on history. At a seminar in Seoul today, Cho pointed out that although the foreign ministers of the three countries agreed in March to properly address history and move forward, Cooperation is lacking in regional security and political matters. The comments are in response to Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's attempts to whitewash history and a call for the inclusion of an apology during a speech next week at the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. Now, speculation is mounting that North Korea is building a camouflage roof for its newly upgraded long-range missile launch pad to avoid the surveillance of South Korea-U.S. Joint Intelligent Forces. In response, Seoul's Defense Ministry said Monday that if North Korea completes the construction of the roof, it would make it difficult for the South Korean military to discern Pyongyang's missile activities. The ministry, however, added that South Korea-U.S. joint forces will have the capability to t sense unusual activities in advance should the North forge ahead with the test firing of long-range rockets. The South Korean government says it's not considering asking former First Lady Lee Hee-ho to deliver a government message during her visit to Pyongyang later this week. The Unification Ministry confirmed the decision today and added that government officials will not accompany Lee on her trip. 
Lee, the widow of former President Kim Dae-jung, is scheduled to visit North Korea from Wednesday through Sunday for humanitarian purposes in the hopes of easing inter-Korean relations. Now shifting gears to economic news, Korea posted yet another current account surplus in June, extending its surplus streak to a record 40 months. It's not actually good news, though, as recent surpluses are reflective of a sluggish economy. Our Kim min has more. In the black again. The Bank of Korea says the nation's current account surplus in June came to 12.2 billion U.S. dollars, up more than 40 percent from the previous month. And with that, Korea has extended its surplus run to a record 40 straight months. For the first half combined, Korea's current account surplus hit a record $52.4 billion, which also marks the first time it has topped $50 billion in the six-month period. While Korea has been setting a new record surplus in recent years, what's worrisome is that the surplus trend is reflective of a slow economy as well as a slump in both exports and imports. In June, exports fell about 2 percent on year, while imports plunged 17 percent. The impact of the MERS outbreak on consumption, as well as the tourism industry, is reflected in the figures. It comes amid slowing exports, showing the overall economy is weak. While Korea is on track to reach the central bank's $98 billion current account surplus target for this year, experts say the government will need to take more stimulus measures to prop up investment and encourage domestic consumption to even out external balances. Kim min Arirang News. The number of workers in Korea earning less than minimum wage reached a record high earlier this year. The latest report by the OECD ranks Korea at the very top in terms of the proportion of underpaid workers. Our Park Se-young has the details. Nearly 15 percent of Korean workers are earning the minimum wage or less. That's one out of seven workers. According to the 2015 edition of the OECD Employment Outlook, the average proportion of workers earning the minimum wage or below it among the 20 OECD members is 5.5 percent. The United States remained below average with 4.3 percent, and Japan stood at just 2 percent. This puts Korea with 14.7 percent at the top of a list, followed by Latvia and Luxembourg. Given that the average wage for regular workers at Korea's largest companies is considered on par with global standards, the figures expose the chronic problem of a widening income gap in Asia's fourth largest economy. The latest report is based on data compiled from 2010 to 2013 and includes workers in the European Union that are being paid less than 105 percent of the national minimum wage. The OECD pointed out that the report may not be comprehensive as the data did not include small businesses with less than 10 employees. It also added that although the minimum wage system is common among the member countries, differences exist in implementation. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Mortgage loans issued by local banks continue to increase in July, normally the slow season for Korea's housing market. According to data compiled from seven commercial banks, mortgage lending stood at a combined 276 billion U.S. dollars at the end of last month, a rise of more than 400 billion. 50 million U.S. dollars from June. When taking into consideration the increase of asset-backed security at, at these banks, the actual surge in housing loans amounted to $2.9 billion, a five-year high. Experts attribute the increase to the government's deregulation drive and low borrowing rates. Data shows apartment transactions in Seoul climbed nearly 89 percent on-year in July. As Korea declared a virtual end to the MERS outbreak last week, the hardest-hit hospital, Samsung Medical Center in southern Seoul, resumed normal operations today. The center, which began treating current patients from late last month after being partially closed due to the outbreak, finalized the normalization of its services by starting to receive new outpatients as well. Along with the treatment of new patients, the hospital has also opened a special emergency room designed to treat emergency patients with respiratory problems. 
Malaysia's transport minister says airplane debris found on Reunion Island has been identified as part of a Boeing 777, the same type of aircraft as missing flight MH370. The wing surface, known as a flaperon, was flown to France for investigation over the weekend. Representatives from Malaysia, the U.S., China, France and Boeing are scheduled to meet on Wednesday to try and verify if the part is really from MH370. A second place of debris, piece of debris also washed up on reunion on Sunday, but has since been discounted. An official said it was part of a ladder and was not from an aircraft. The doomed Malaysia Airways plane vanished in March last year with 239 passengers and crew on board. Now, some great news for K-pop music fans out there. A massive concert dubbed Summer K-pop Festival will be held at the Seoul City Plaza on Tuesday from 7 p.m. Those scheduled to perform include Gangnam Style star Psy and other Korean idols such as Infinite, GOT7 and Tiara. The event, co-hosted by the Culture Ministry and the Korea Tourism Organization, is part of efforts to help the local tourism industry rebound from the MERS outbreak. The ministry says it will give foreign tourists free tickets and provide information about other attractions in Korea. That brings us to the end of our newscast. More updates coming up at 10 p.m. Korea time, so stay tuned and goodbye for now.